Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us today at JAL International 2020. Uh, I'd like to welcome Satya Fujita Rayan. She's from the International Christian University. And today she'll be talking about transforming resources into webinars and videos. Welcome, Satya. Um, please start. Thank you, Forrest. Oh, good morning, everybody. And I hope you can enjoy my presentation, but you have to bear with me handling all these ICT things. I'm not very good at it. But anyway, so let us start that. Uh, I would like to share my PowerPoint. And I'm going to talk about PowerPoint, but I'm going to give the details of references of mine and the later at the end as a kind of PDF or word and the, through the chat. So, and please do not worry about taking a memo. Right. Okay. So let me check and uh, let me share the screen. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Are you okay? I mean, you see that. Right. So, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for joi joining this and presentation. I am Sachi Fujita Rand, and uh, today I am a representative of Linga Pax Asia International NGO, and more like an Asian, Asian branch. And also, I am teaching social linguistics at the International Christian University, Tokyo. Today, I am talking about um, a few things, but this is, a, this is more or less the contents I summarize. The first, I'm going to introduce you about Lingapax Asia. And then secondly, I'm going to talk about Occupy ICU campus and listen to the voices of UQs. And this is the background of these resources. And thirdly, and transforming resources into online forms like webinar and YouTube, and then concluding remarks at the end, okay? And I'd like to introduce myself because I think it is quite important for you to know who is speaking. So about myself, and I, am the, I have been a language teacher for a long time before my PhD, and I've got my PhD one month before I become I became 50 years old. So I am really sort of late starter as a researcher, but I have been a trained and experienced language teacher. I used to be the member of the JALT also. And then I am a parent of two bilingual children in Japan. My name, Fujita is my name and Round is my husband, he's British. So our children naturally and dual nationalities and bilingual. And I also have been, been a field worker, sociolinguist, and then currently I'm teaching more like on sociolinguistic courses at the International Christian University. But my academic interest has been and bilingualism and multilingualism in Japan all the time. And my, one of my articles earlier in my career, um, I published it into the JELT and bilingualism SIG, which is very useful. This is my first paper. And then recently, I am more shifted to bilingualism and multilingualism in Japan. So currently, um, I'm researching in Miyako Island, which I'm going to tell you just now. Miyako language is spoken in the sou southern Ryukyu, Okinawa Prefecture. And I'm going to show you the map later on, so please don't get lost. And then, uh, which is the southmost prefecture of Japan. These vernacular languages in Ryukyu Islands are labeled as um, endangered languages of Japan. This endangerment articulates Japanese modern history when the Ryukyuan Islands were incorporated under the control of Japan in 18, uh, 1879, when the language assimilation into Japanese by the central government started. In the 21st century, UNESCO's alert made an impact and was internationally acknowledged for raising the attention and awareness of endangered languages. And this is the Miyako Island, beautiful islands. And also these are my informants. They are the balanced bilinguals, but above 80, 90 years old. And currently I am doing the research and educating and the youngsters and the new speakers and to, to let them become bilingual of Miyako and, and Japanese. UNESCO announced in 2003, there are eight endangered languages in Japan. And they are Ainu, Hachijo, Amami, Kunigami, Okinawan, Miyakoan, Yaeyama, and Yunaguni. And six Ryukyuan languages are nominated here. 
And this is the map of the and, and address of the lang and languages in the Endanger by the UNESCO. And so this is Ainu, Hachijo. These six languages are along Yukuan arcs here. And Miyakoan is this. Okay, so now, and why and I am doing this, and also I am representing the Lingabaks and Asia. So this is a part of the Lingabaks Asia. Lingabaks is a national and international and NGO, and then they aim that Lingabaks protects and promote the revitalization of world linguistic diversity to contribute to dialogue and peace. And this is the aim and our mission. And I, I sort of borrowed and from our director, Biba, who is attending just currently. And Linga Bax Asia is and the affiliate, I mean, the Asia, Asia affiliate, affiliates of Linga Bax International NGO headquarters in, in Barcelona, Spain, and dedicated to the appreciation and protection of linguistic diversity worldwide. And there are seven delegates around the world, and Asia is one of them. And then it really started, I initiated from the initiate project in 1987. And objectives of Lingapax uh, pro project is promoting bilingual multilingual education, elaborating approaches to language education that facilitates intercultural understanding, fostering respect for linguistic diversity and heritage, support endangered languages, and raising awareness of links between language, identity, human rights, and the quest for peace. peace. I suppose, and the audience, you must be the language teachers, but uh, this is quite important to raise the awareness of each languages and the diversity of languages and how can they sort of uh, make a good harmony and then live together. This is in Japanese which says tabunka kyosei, multicultural kyosei, living together and this is the objective of the Lingabax project and which is linked to my own project as well. Lingabax Asia, you, we usually have uh, the symposium, and we really had very good symposium, and, and this year, and we were about to have the symposium in June, unfortunately we have to cancel it, and currently we are considering to reorganize it next year. And last year, it is uh, actually the year or International Year of Indigenous Languages 2019. And then Biba and I, and, and also the delegate from the Thailand, and we created the videos uh, to promote and sort of endangered languages in Japan and Miyakoan, and also five languages in Thailand. And this is a kind of activities we do. Okay, so this is now uh, moving to the uh, the main topic um, for the day and what I did also. Occupy ICU campus and listening to the voices of Yukis. Okay, well, first of all, and first, and I sort of came to think that we need, I mean, we humbly, I mean, when I say we, we the people living in the mainland Japan, and which is, I mean, Ryukyu is south far and the south end. And also, I mean, they are really incorporated with the end of uh, the 19th century. So we have to really listen to their voices, what they like to do. And unless, I mean, they, they just sort of, unless we, we, we have to do it, otherwise their um, language is my really vanishing. So this is a kind of urgent and endangered uh, endangerment, which um, I found for, through my and researches. So I applied to this faculty program grant by Japan ICU Fund, which is sort of given to the ICU and the faculty. And then I applied and I got uh, this grant. And then I made a proposal and initially that myself and Dr. Maha and Dr. Gilan and three specialists from the Ryukyu Ryukyu. And what I proposed for this project is that I organize three different events and project one, project two, project three, and then project one in April, and it is supposed to be having the photo exhibition in an ICU museum. And also project two, and um, this is this is a music session, and then we are going to have this music concert and at the chapel of ICU. And project three, and since this and the projects and the events are all and 
integrated in my course of language and society, which is um, a one course and from April to June. So um, the third project is related to the student and presentation. And then, and also we, I was thinking about the poster presentation, inviting three specialists from the Ryukyu Islands. And then the students and they can discuss about what they found out, what the students found out. So these three events and I prepared and then I spent a lot of time and also a lot of effort and then this course is actually expected between 80 to 120. Well, in the end, and it came out as 118 students took my course. And so these and the three events were the more like a vehicle and to run my course. Unfortunately, and Oh, sorry, before I say, unfortunately, we have to still go on to explain about the project, okay. So, and how to convey the course. And so for this three months and lec well, lectures of the foundation of social linguistics, and I do, and then to utilize the voices from UQ events as examples to understand the relationship between language and society as living examples. So students need to visit actual places for these tasks outside classrooms, but on campus, which is related to what I learned from the intercultural communication that experiential learning and also applied linguistics clear perhaps. And then and places and museum and chapel and international conference room, the real actual real place, not classroom. So this is all real place on campus. So and they're supposed to be doing their project, I mean short report, and then two short reports plus group poster presentations. And then after this poster presentation, individual students are supposed to be writing a long essay as a final report for this course. So these four and really the, the most of the main objectives for the students and to finish off and then I can evaluate. Thinking about ICU, Occupy ICU, that sort of the idea is sort of came out because ICU actually has a, a huge sort of facilities and then that was really enclosed in a quite beautiful campus. So this is main classroom sort of buildings and then this is an in, uh, this is a museum and this is chapel and this is the, and the international conference room here. So on the whole, and the students have to use four facilities like this. And I thought that would be quite interesting, more like a field work, you know, doing the field work within the campus. But, um, for, and, but preparation in advance really took a long time. And then project one, and I did three projects, but the three, I mean, the third one has to be entirely cancelled quite early stage. And but the project one and project two, I spent really more than a year and to prepare myself. So, and well, which means that, you know, although I prepared, then I wanted to do something about it. I didn't want to give up. So, and what I did is that transforming these resources and preparation into webinars on YouTube. So under this sound circumstance and um, COVID and the 19, as you know, and the, I, I mean, this spring ICU announced all the classes shifted to online and like the other school. And in due course, all the events plans to promote voices of endangered languages and cultures of Miyago Island at our university campus were canceled. So, at the University Museum, and the there would be the photograph and exhibition, but unfortunately, and it was not really sort of came. I mean, came in public. So I'm just going to show you the brief, and this is the ICU Museum, and this is sort of the way to go up to the special and the exhibition which we prepared. So I prepared events. I mean, this photo exhibition to promote the actual voices of UQ. Yet on the same day, when we finished exhibiting the photographs, the university announced a lockdown, which means nobody can come in. So this is very lonely, quiet room and the photo exhibitions. And then these photographs are taken between the 1970s to 1990, 1990s, which means reflecting all sorts of 
Japanese modernization in relation to the Okinawan and culture that they have been under the occupation of the US until 1972. So there are a lot of changes like these children I mean, are wearing quite sort of modern clothes at the time, whereas these, I mean, they are making all the prayers in the shabby hat, which means old and the new are really all in together in one photograph. So online resources, and at, there are two things that I just want this to share, but at least I can sort of share this link and which I transformed, uh, I mean, this photo exhibition into the online resources as a YouTube tour guide. I briefly, I'm going to show you this and the gallery tour three, which has been created that I became the guide and the camera audio recording English translation and the assistants, they are supported by the museum staff, plus the music from my friend Miyako and singer Miwa Yonashiro. So I just want to sort of want you to enjoy just about one minute and a half. Okay, so I'm going to play this now for you. Is a の神に加護を買う。東野総の皿浜の写真。皿浜は漁業が盛んな集落ですので、海の神に五加護を買う祭祀が盛んに行われてきました。東野総が皿浜で写したのは浜の神への願いの写真でした。浜の神は海の神または龍宮の神と同じ意味です。今回の写真展では皿浜池間島のひらがん以外の祭祀が写されています。Okay, so we unfortunately, because of the time, we cannot watch this, and therefore going back to the going back to the slides, right? So this is one of uh, the transfer transformation I made, and from photo the actual photo exhibition to the YouTube tour guide, and secondly, another online webinar which I just sort of transformed is a music session. But originally, I was going to sort of invite and the more and the three different type of music from the Okinawa Island, Ishigaki Island, and Miyako Island. But this time, and I sort of invited and the Shimoji Isamu, and he is one of my, has been a long informant and has been really the collaborator and to make my own video and for the other sort of documentary film. So I invited him and then that was hosted by the ICU Institute of Asian Cultural Studies. So and the director introduced him and then afterwards we have got some songs and then talk and which is very interesting. And then just very sort of um, just a little bit of no, I have not time. So I was going to play some music, but never mind. And Shimoji Isamu is play and the singing his songs in Miyakoa. So this is concluding remarks and we, I just went through very quickly with you uh, to give to provide a lot of information, but I hope you enjoyed and well just to get to know about Lingopax Asia and also those two attempts which I did and I'm not sure whether you that would be helpful. I mean, for you to um, to do it for your own practice, teaching practice. But uh, I just, at the end, I just like to mention about why, and I just sort of did this and the events and things just to conclude and of my presentation. Well, I have been researching Miyako Island for the last eight years, and then from my research on Miyako Island from to, to 
2012, I learned the reality of what we gained and lost by the modernization of Japan. So this is not only the problem of Miyako Island, but the problem of Japan. So how to make this research useful for the university courses where I teach became my challenge for language revitalization, which means to raise my students' awareness to understand um, this modernization of Japan, what we lost. And then in the end, I decided to have this and um, VQ events, but unfortunately because of the lockdown happened on a day and when the exhibition was ready. But now uh, the YouTube died and was added to the museum archive and my class of 100A students and 19 pa and the person public audience learned about Isamu Shimoji. That was a huge success. And well, his songs in Miyako was well appreciated. So in the end, by transforming those into um, a kind of online form, these voices, the theme of my, my, th my events really stay online forever and repeatedly are heard. So this is a kind of unexpected result, but it sort of turned out to be a kind of nice result in the end. So I don't want to talk about this, but and I just thought it might be interesting to connect what I did to the multilingual turn by the Stephen May and also the, um, the Peter Austin and Julia Salabanks and the Cambridge and Books and Endangered Languages Indigenous languages, and there are the cases of Japan, this overt repression, often in the name of national unity, assimilation, and against the Okinawa and Ryukyu and Ainu, that is why the, and they became the endangered languages. Okay, And from now on, I am going to uh, promote this endangered discourse of endangered languages and as a social linguist and already created this film about the Miyako and endangered languages as a kind of documentary video for 48 minutes. And I'm going to present this uh, the next year and um, in Belgium and one year after in Venice. So internationally, if I can raise the awareness then, and the islanders and also the Japanese people might be interested in this endangerment. Okay, thank you very much. Tandi ga, Tandi Imiyako. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so I, uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? You can please chat those in or you can just uh, ask your question verbally. Viva, unmute, please. I mean, mute. Unmute. Okay, yeah. Okay, now you can hear me. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sachio. You've put so much in this short presentation. I'm sure you could talk on for two, two hours or more. Uh, what I'm interested in is, what to, did you get any feedback from the students about your webinar and also about uh, the photographic, photographic exhibition? Uh, and what what is it? What is this feedback like? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for asking. And um, uh, in Japanese, I have written a few reports which will be published next year, and um, for the um, the Asian Cultural Institute. But uh, yes, the students are really more. I mean, really moved. Well, particularly under this pressure of this um, the COVID nineteen, they have to be locked down, locked down themselves into the home. So even though they didn't understand what, for example, the Shimoji san song and the sang in Miyako <laughs> Island, but some students absolutely they they sort of talking about they have been sort of cried and they really moved and then they are really intrigued into his songs and the world of the music. So a kind of um, Shimoji-san's talk and also very friendly and nice talk really sort of gave them a good impression that there's a very decent person and from Miyako Island. So that is a good promotion for the Miyako Island as well. Mm -hmm. And also so, some other students, they really um, fascinated. So afterwards they wrote sort of a long and um, feedback and and then and they really checked and listened to Shimoji san song. Some students even tried to memorize and all the songs in Miyakoan for this report, short report, they submitted it. So I mean that was kind of more like um, authentic material for them and instead of textbook. And, but uh, this is not written form, but um, the verbal form, which is very interesting outcome. And just to see how students reacted as well. 
Okay. All right, well, uh, uh, the presentation has finished. Uh, could I ask everyone to unmute and give uh, Satya a great round of applause? And uh, if you guys would like to continue this discussion, I know Kristen would like uh, a link to the materials you made. If you could do that in the Hangouts, uh, if you go to the Hangouts, um, room, if you go to Eventzilla and you type in Hangouts in the search window, go to that uh, um, the Hangouts room, then you can go into a breakout room and you can continue this discussion. Okay, so, all right. All right, uh, is that possible, Kristen? Can you, you guys go into the Hangouts room? Um, I actually have another presentation to go to next, but I grabbed um, your um, email address, Sachio. So if oh, you don't okay. mind, I'll send you an email. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you very much. Please give another round of applause. Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye. Okay, and I'm going to end this session now. Yeah.